Thanks everybody for being here. We're not too numerous today, so it's going almost to be a private lesson, but that's good. Uh, so I'm here to talk to you about M2Doc, uh, document generation from models. So what I expect from the audience is to have some level of familiarity on modeling, models and series. So if you don't know either of them, it's going probably to be hard to follow, but I, I guess that everybody's a bit familiar with modeling and uh, serious in the room. Who is not? No? Everybody's fine. Great. So, welcome. So I would just want to start by putting things in context. So I will start with two use cases to explain why M2Doc is a, an important piece of the modeling uh, area. Uh, a first use case is that of uh, the CNAV, a French organism that deals with uh, retirement uh, funds. Uh, they work uh, on a modeling workbench to specify their standard messages. That is the way every organism in France exchanges data related to uh, payrolls, uh, retirement, uh, formations, um, and all, all, all that. All these messages, which are uh, some terabytes of data every month, are dealt with by, uh, by CNAV. And the structure of these messages that are exchanged are modeled in a modeling workbench, uh, workbench which is called Saturn. Okay, so from this workbench, they produce executables that are able to validate the messages that are sent by all the companies in France who emit payrolls. And uh, these validators are gener automatically generated from their modeling workbench. Okay, so they have, of course, to deal with uh, payroll software developers and payroll companies who uh, develop payroll software because all the payroll software used by uh, all the companies must produce messages that are compliant with the standards that are designed by uh, CNAV. Okay, and the payroll data that comes out of payroll software is then at some point uh, injected into the validation engine produced from uh, Saturn to be validated and then to be broadcast uh, to other uh, third parties and uh, um, processed. So the way the CNAV and payroll uh, de uh, software developers work together is through a standard documentation each message, uh, each standard of message that is described by the CNAV is described and provided to third parties in a standard documentation, which is a, a PDF or Word document with a very accurate format. Uh, and that must precisely reflect what is uh, modeled in the workbench. So here you see that you have the need to produce a document a rich document that can be used by many uh, third parties. Here are the, the payroll software developers and uh, many other actors that I won't uh, detail here. And the data contained in these documents must reflect very exactly what is in the modeling workbench and in the models manipulated by this workbench. Okay, so that's one first use case where you can see that having a way to produce rich documents from a model is really a, a, a key feature and not just a toy to, to please somebody. Okay, second example. Uh, we work with uh, the French uh, Department of Defense and they, uh, they use a modeling workbench to describe their uh, software uh, infrastructure and soft, uh, information system, sorry. And they discuss with business analysts that provide specification and they, the way they work now is by modeling the specification in their modeling workbench to be sure that they understand correctly the specification provided by the business analyst and the other way around to be sure also that the business analyst agrees that uh, the developers have understood correctly the, the requirements. So one first document that needs to be produced from a, a model, which is a model of specifications and um, not a specification, just the requirements, but specification of a flow of screens and flow of data and this kind of things that needs uh, to be uh, exported in a document that can be read by business analysts who don't want to access a modeling workbench. They want to use plain documents readable. So that's 
one case where they need to produce a document from a model in this environment. And also, they, uh, of course, the information system in, is based on a database and they also model the structure of this database. And so they have to provide to database administrators a data dictionary that will also have to reflect their model so that database administrators can do their job properly to manage the database. And uh, the document, once again, must reflect exactly the information that's in the model so that everything is synchronized correctly. Okay, so these use cases were just a way to uh, convince you, if you weren't uh, already convinced, that uh, written documents are still necessary even though we work on modeling workbench and models uh, more and more. They are important because we need to transmit information to people who will not access the modeling workbenches and modeling environments. And also, very often, they are necessary to fulfill certain obligations uh, because in many uh, companies, you have processes and legal obligations to document traceability elements and many, many uh, kinds of uh, uh, process documents to respect a certain standard or these kind of things. Okay, and in... <laughs> In any case, welcome aboard. <laughs> Hi, Francis. <laughs> okay. So, and in all these cases, uh, as I mentioned several times, but I really want to nail it, uh, the model should be the reference, and you want your document to be just an extraction of the model, and be sure that the, the information that's in there is the exact uh, reflection of the information contained in the model, which is the central point shared by uh, all your stack and people. Okay, so our solution today is called M2Doc, which stands for Model to Documentation. Yeah, uh, I know, uncanny name. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the basic principles, uh, you'll see, I, I will be very high level here, is that you will, of course, have to build your model. That's not in the scope of M2Doc, so we assume that you have models and you work on models, EMF models, generally, in an Eclipse environment. And then you will have to write templates, which are plain word documents, in which you will describe how you want to extract information from your model and how you want to display it in the word documents. You will then provide these two elements to M2Doc, which will in turn produce an output document, which will be a Word document that will have the same styles and uh, structure as the, your template, but the content of which will be extracted from the model and uh, really contextualize with, with your model. The principle of a template is that it's reusable, so as long as you work on the same meta model, of course, uh, with the same conventions and so on, you can reuse a given template on different models. Uh, so if you uh, are uh, modeling a plane, you will get a, a document which will, of course, <laughs> talk about planes. And the other way around, you can, of course, use different templates on the same model. Each template would address a specific concern, uh, for example, a specific layer of your uh, model or uh, anything, that's up to you and uh, each template will produce a document that will address this specific concern by extracting just what is needed from the model, not necessarily all of it. Okay, so these are really the very basic principles. We'll show, we'll show demo very soon. I just want to talk about who is involved when uh, dealing with M2Doc. Well, of course, one of the important roles is the what I call the templatist. Uh, the vocabulary is not... Uh, is, is brand new, it's my own vocabulary, so maybe it will change in the future. So the templatist is the person who will have to redact uh, M2Doc templates, which involves creating a Word document and putting in the Word document all the styles, defining the structure of the document that is expected, and then implementing the requests in the Word document to extract information from the model. We'll see that in a, in a minute. The templatist will use AQL services, so AQL is a query language that's integrated in Sirius uh, and that allows to navigate and extract information from a, a model, so that we reuse this uh, language which, which is now quite mature and uh, well uh, shared among uh, several uh, participants in, in Eclipse, 
uh, including Sirius. And the templatist will have, of course, to test and debug his templates until he's satisfied with them. Then we have the meta model expert. Very often, these two roles will be the same person, but that's, that's not mandatory. The meta model expert is the one who knows really uh, well the meta model or meta models that are involved and who will provide services to easily extract information from a meta model. Because you, if you are familiar with models and meta models, you will know that meta models can, can be very complex and it can be uh, sometimes uh, quite uh, complex to really uh, know how to navigate to a specific information in the model and to extract it correctly. So it may require special expertise. That's why I, I separated from the templatist who will use the, the services provided by the meta model expert. And also the AQL services built by the metamodel expert can be used not only by uh, M2Doc, but also by Sirius for uh, doing uh, any uh, exploration of the model to build, for example, the, the representations, the diagrams and tables and so on used in Sirius. The third role is straightforward. The end user, the one who will use the templates, build the model, and at some point want to produce a document uh, from this model, uh, generally after the model is versioned. And uh, also the end user very often will want to modify the generated document to insert in certain places uh, textual or uh, any, any information that needs to be entered by hand and the end user will want this information to be kept even if we regenerate over and over uh, the same document. So there is a mechanism for that in M2Doc to support incremental generation, keeping the user uh, text uh, unchanged. Okay, so these are just roles, which means that in very large companies there may be uh, really three different people uh, involved uh, and uh, very often the meta model expert and the templatist might be the same person and also often the end user will be able to make uh, his own templates if needed uh, as long as he has enough knowledge of the, of the meta model involved. So it can be only one person. I mean these are just roles. Okay, so how do you do now to write template? Let's dive in the technical part. So uh, templates are plain Microsoft Word documents and only Microsoft Word documents. We don't support uh, OpenOffice, uh, LibreOffice or uh, this, uh, all this stack. Uh, in Word, you may know that there, there is a special mechanism uh, called fields that is used by Word to manage all dynamic information like table of contents, page numbers, and uh, references between stuff and so on. We use this mechanism to insert the instructions that will be used by M2Doc to extract information, to loop over the data, and to do its work. You can show the content of these fields by activating Alt F9 in Word. I will show that later. A question? Yes, about uh, plain uh, MS4 document, do you mean uh, Doc or Doc? DocX. Okay. Yeah, DocX. And if you want to insert a field in, wor in Word, it's just Control F9. So, well, two shortcuts to know to be able to start doing M2Doc. And then the M2Doc syntax is very simple. In a field, you have to type M colon. That's the M2Doc prefix. And after that, there is a, a few commands that are the M2Doc commands. And you have to know AQL to be able to query your model and extract information from it. So, first example, m colon conf.name will, uh, yeah, so just, I imagine that will be the case in my demo. I am working on a meta model that describes conferences. So I have uh, a root element, which is my conference, and a conference has tracks, it has speakers and uh, participants, it has uh, rooms and uh, all, all this stuff. A very simple meta model. So in this example, conf.name is the name of the conference uh, stored in the variable conf. So if I enter a field with m colon conf.name, this is a part that would be evaluated by m2doc and that will output the name of the conference and the rest is just plain text in Word so it will just be copied as is in the output document. m2doc prefix always, then your AQL expression will be evaluated and output uh, in, uh, in Word and regular content will be kept as is. So this will produce EclipseCon France is located in Toulouse. So one thing to note is that the style that I have used for my field, uh, I used bold and uh, yellow color, is reproduced in the output. 
So Eclipse Conference is displayed in uh, bold yellow. Okay, you can loop over uh, data from your metamodel. For example, if I want to loop over the tracks of my conference, well, I use the for syntax, so m colon for. Track is the variable for each track in the tracks of my conference. And I want to output a, a bullet list of the tracks with the text track colon and then the name of the track. So this will produce basically uh, a list, a bullet list of my tracks like this. You can do the same for tables. So if you wrap a, a table line in a for loop, you can uh, define as many cells as you want and this will produce a table like this with the name in the first column and the description of the track in the second column. Pretty simple. You have uh, conditions with if, so if, else, if, else, and if, uh, else, if, and else are optional. You can put that on one line or, or several lines. The line breaks will be kept uh, as they are. Uh, no example here, it's so straightforward. And then there are some other uh, instructions. So you can insert images uh, that you have uh, locally available and you can specify the width, height and uh, what, uh, whatever. You can insert uh, a special area in the document that will be used to uh, allow the end user to enter text and keep this text over regeneration. So each, each area like this is identified by an ID which is computed by a query. So it's dynamically computed if you want or it, it can be fixed uh, if you use a, a plain string. And this ID is what allows M2Doc to uh, find in the former document the text that was entered by the end user, put it apart, regenerate and reinsert what the user had put there in the, in the right place to make sure that it is kept correctly. And you can also use bookmarks and links. So that's what in, works is, uh, in Word is used to have uh, text that you can click in to navigate somewhere else in your document, a bit like uh, anchors in HTML. So uh, you have a bookmark somewhere and you can have as many links as you want, which will navigate to this bookmark. Okay, so about services now, you can see uh, a very simple if uh, instruction. Well, may maybe not so simple after all. So that's one of the first pitfalls uh, in uh, this kind of, uh, uh, well, in, in M2Doc. You will very fast be tempted to write expressions that maybe come complex uh, to navigate your model because a meta model is something that is very rich and you, you will have to navigate very complex uh, uh, structures and very fast it may become really hard and especially I remind you that in Word you're not in Eclipse with code completion, you can't hit control space to have any help and so on. So this becomes very uh, uncomfortable. So that's where services come to help. Uh, and it's very recommended to use services to encapsulate any logic that becomes a, a bit complex, even, even not very complex, so that you can properly develop it in a Java environment with all the unit tests associated with it, with the help that provides the uh, Java IDE, and then just to use these services uh, in, the, in the templates so that you reduce the, the risk of error. Okay, so services are uh, registered. Uh, so, so they are plain, uh, plainly AQL services, which means they are just plain old Java objects methods. Very simple to, to define. There's no API, nothing. It's just a, a, a plain class with a method. And they are registered through an extension point. And as soon as they are registered, uh, they are available in, uh, the, in any M2Doc uh, template that, uh, that's written in an, in an Eclipse where the uh, services are deployed. So they facilitate, of course, the creation and maintenance sorry, of templates, as I explained just before. Okay, now uh, M2Doc plus Sirius go very well together. One important thing to note is that M2Doc does not rely on Sirius at all. M2Doc is uh, I will see, we will see the architecture later, but it does not depend on Sirius, but there is a, an integration layer with Sirius to make sure that both work together well. So, which means that if you use Sirius to 
uh, edit your models and uh, have representations, diagrams, tables, and so on. You can insert all these representations in your output document. Uh, you can also check whether a diagram exists for a given element or a table or anything like that. So there are dedicated services provided by uh, Sirius to, to, to do that in your templates. So here you can see that services are also the, the way that third-party uh, tools can integrate with uh, M2Doc to bring added value. And you have to specify in, uh, well, we'll see that uh, just now in the demo, at last, a demo. Uh, that's the one. So here is the conference meta model I was uh, talking about. You can see here the tree of the model. I have a conference which has tracks, uh, which has pe persons, uh, days, and locations. and we have defined a, a number of uh, diagrams here to just, it's a classical example that we use to, uh, to, sh to show the features of Sirius. So we, we have different kinds of diagrams. This one shows uh, the, the planning of the days. The, this kind of diagram shows uh, for a given track, the talks that are contained in this track with the speakers of each talk and, and so on. And this one is a, a toy to try and reproduce the the program that you may see on, uh, on uh, the EclipseCon webpage, the list of talks per room with a different color uh, depending on the track they are uh, attached to. Okay, so very simple meta models that uh, everybody understands what we talk about. And here is my template. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, it's a plain uh, Word document. And you can see here what I, what I was talking about. These are the fields. So if I hit Alt F9, these fields are not visible anymore because it's the standard mode of uh, Word which displays the computed value of fields. And Word knows nothing about M column uh, fields, so it ignores them. And so here I will loop over the speakers and display a list of the speakers with the name of the speaker. And if the organization of the speaker is not null, I will also, between parentheses, uh, print the organization of the speaker. After that, for each track, I will have one section for the track. And first thing, I will insert a diagram for the track uh, and specify, I specify just its, ma its maximum width so that it fits in the page. It will, it will be, a, uh, what is it called? Um, resized properly, <laughs> thank you. And uh, for the, for, I will also list the talks of this track and display a subsection with the name of the talk as a title and then the, a, a little table with the speaker's time and so on. And here, a more complex and interesting table that will, uh, as a summary at the end of the document, list all the talks of the conference. And it is configured so that this uh, header is reproduced on each page if the table spans several pages, which is some, some, a feature that is very often asked for, so it's supported. And uh, after that, I will just, uh, in, this, uh, in this document, uh, display one additional uh, diagram. Well, I, I won't enter more in more details. If you want to see it in detail, come uh, and see me after. That's not the point here. You can see also that you can use uh, instructions in the headers and footers uh, of, uh, of the Word document. So we just print the conference name uh, in the header. And that's it. That's uh, a template. Well, almost. You, you could maybe, well, probably not, but actually you can see that here I iterate over all the speakers of the conference. Where does this come from? Actually, it, I have to provide a configuration where I will tell uh, what element from my model conf represents. So I, I basically have to define at least one variable that is the, the root variable used by my template. A template can use as many variables as, uh, as you want, but at least one, otherwise it will not access the model at all, and so it will not be very dynamic. So here my main variable is called conf, uh, conference, basically, and I have to uh, define this variable somewhere. So first, first thing, uh, 
I have a, a little help here to configure the variables used by my template. First thing I need to do is to say my template will rely on which meta model. It will rely on the conference meta model. So you you will choose the conference meta model. This is the one, and then you can define variables. So here I only want to define one variable, which I called conf. You have of course to make sure this name is the one used in the template. And then you can uh, say, I want it to be a plain string or something from uh, whatever meta model you're using. So I want conf to be of type conference. So here, basically, I declare a variable named conf, which is of type conference. OK, this is a wizard integrated in Eclipse. The data manipulated by this wizard is actually stored in the docx document. So if I uh, open this wizard again, this uh, it's not a wizard, but this pop-up again, you will see that the information is not lost. It's really stored in the docx document itself. That was step number one. Now I need to create a configuration to, uh, to say, I want to produce this document from this template and this model. So this is done quite simply with this menu, which will produce a genconf file. This genconf file, let's see what it looks like. Uh, basically, it's a, a generation configuration. Uh, some fields are initialized uh, automatically. I just have to enter a name for the output file I want to produce. So here I want to produce uh, Eclipse Conference 2017 docx document. And you can see that there is a variable here. I have to bind this variable to the actual value I want to use for this generation. So that's where you say, I want to pick this element from this model. So here, the, the value, there's one way uh, more simple to, to do it. You can also do it from the Project Explorer. And here you get a, a nicer properties view and you can go and plainly select your uh, your element from all the models that are known from the serious uh, uh, session currently. So the session has loaded my conference model and has loaded my templates. So I want my conference to be this one, the root element of my model actually. Okay. So now I have defined the name of the output document. I have defined the main variable, which will be the entry point for my uh, template to start looking into the model and fetching elements from it. Uh, I think we have all that we need to uh, run the first generation. Ah, no, I just forget something, sorry. I need to also specify which uh, serious session I want to use. So that may seem weird, I will explain just now. Uh, serious session. <laughs> uh, yes, does anybody know the um, shortcut to Zoom or, or I will uh, I will plainly um, It was right. Ah. So we will lose uh, just a, a bit of time. I'm not sure this plays well with Eclipse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My pleasure. So, <laughs> yeah, and your pleasure too, I think. It's, it's going to be better. <laughs> I, I hadn't realized that. Sorry. So, uh, the value I have to enter here is just the name of the ARD file. Uh, so, representations.ard. So just one quick comment. Be aware that it's a work under development. It's not a finalized version at all. So that's why I have so many tiny stuff that I have to do and that a final user would not want to do. And this kind of stuff will be automated as much as possible. OK, so why do we want? Because I am in a serious project. The session is loaded. You could see that I could pick the conference from the session. So everything is known. Why do I have to specify the session here? That's because we want such a GenConf to be usable, even though Eclipse is not launched. 
even if they are declared in another project which is not a serious project and so on. So by simply declaring exactly which file to contains the session, we can, no matter whether the session is loaded, the project is open, etc., we are able to go and manually load the session in whatever circumstance, which is much safer and uh, better for all the scenarios we want to support. Okay, so now I have everything I need to uh, generate something. But before generating, I want to make sure that my template is correct. So uh, you, and well, to make it more funny, I will just make uh, intentional mistakes in my template so that we have things to, uh, to, to fix. Okay, so I, for example, used a, a, a wrong feature name here. I can, sorry. I can ask to validate the documentation template. You might wonder why this is available on the GenConf file and not on the docx file. Actually, the docx file standalone does not know which model you are referring to, and so he cannot validate anything because he won't be able to access the model and make sure that what you want to refer to is there. So the only way, the only place where you have configured everything is the GenConf file. That's where you know the model, the meta models, the template, and the output file that you want to produce. So that's the place where you will have all the actions available. I can validate. Okay, it will tell me that it validated successfully and produced an output uh, file, which is the result of the validation. Uh, let's have a look. You can see, well, now I've zoomed, it's harder, but you can see that immediately it tells me, hey, I don't know about NAM. Uh, this feature does not exist. So four minutes, okay. Uh, this is a very important feature, precise and accurate error location. You can see that the error is really located where it happens and not at a fancy place in the document. It's in the Word document, so it's easy to use for the end user. So I will fix my template. And now I can revalidate, re but uh, we, we won't do that. We don't have time. I will just generate the documentation. Okay, it is generated, and uh, I think I have to refresh. Here is the document that was created, which, which is what we wanted. So you can see that we have, uh, as promised, the list of speakers at the beginning, and then we have one section per track with a diagram of, of this track and the list of the talks with the speakers and so on. Uh, and uh, well that takes uh, uh, quite a number of pages and at the end you have a larger table with all the um, all the talks i guess you can see that this table has a header that is repeated over the next page because it spans several pages and at last you have the program of the whole conference okay so basically what we wanted and no, no need to go further on the demonstration so I will switch back to my slides. A, a few words on the history. M2Doc was co-founded and co-created by several companies interested in this problematic of having a reliable way of creating rich documents from models. So CNAV, the French Department of Defense, CS and OBO worked together to specify and realize this implementation. So that's a real nice uh, open source uh, project co-funded by several actors. The architecture of M2Doc, I mentioned that it does not depend on Sirius, actually it depends on AQL, the query language, Apache POI, which is a library to manipulate Word and Excel documents, and EMF, of course, because we <laughs> rely on models anyway. And that's all. So it's pretty easy to take it and use it for uh, uh, builds and uh, whatever scenario you, you want. It depends on as little things as possible. Then there is an IDE layer, which is the integration of M2Doc in Eclipse. And this is where the extension points are uh, provided. And then a, a user, a UI layer, which uh, offers actions and wizards and so on. And the uh, extension point is used by the M2Doc series integration to uh, make possible to uh, uh, integrate diagrams and tables and so on. Okay, show me the code. It's hosted on GitHub at this address. So the slides will be available, of course. I'll come back to that later, sorry, you can write it down. 
the roadmap, it's currently under development. I already stated it, but uh, it's important. It's not uh, an actual version now. It's really under development still. The V1.0 is targeted for October. Uh, the scope is to have the current features that I showed finalized and polished and uh, some work on user friendliness to make sure that anybody can find the website easily, find the documentation, use the documentation to actually write templates and make them work easily. And then after that, we will gather feedback and try to continue the same way we worked uh, by co-funding and co-working on that to enrich it, add features and, and, uh, and so on and keep improving. So what you must remember about M2Doc, it produces Word documents from EMF compliant models. It can include serious diagrams and tables. It's easy to use. Error reporting is good. It supports incremental generation and it will be available in October. Thank you. And one last word uh, before the question. Don't forget to rate the talks, including this one, whether you liked it or not, but especially if you liked it.